This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, ladies and gents, we finally made it. We've got to the last video of the entire syllabus. So I'll try not to get too emotional uh, as we part and go our separate ways. And I disappear off and get F3 sorted whilst you go through there and pass the F2 exam in the knowledge that you will get to see me again. So, so fear not everybody. Uh, and what we've got, the last little bit, it's pretty straightforward in terms of exam questions, I'd have thought, because it's looking there at the limitations of ratio analysis. We've already talked about the ratios with regards to EPS and the limitations of earnings per share in the accounting standards section. This here pretty much repeats what we've seen already. OK, so you've calculated all the ratios, gross margin, operating margin, return on capital employed, dividend cover, dividend yield. Oh. Yeah, you've calculated so many of them, you can probably calculate them in your sleep, okay? Uh, but why are those ratios not perfect? Well, first reason that we've got there, everything's in the past, that's the future. You're a management accountant, that's what you're training to be, so you like to look at the future. Yeah, the problem with financial accounting is that they look in the past, don't they, okay? So what's happened in the past is of very little relevance to what's going to happen in the future. You know, we like to look at budgets, cash flow forecast as opposed to thinking what's happened in the past. We can learn from it. What happened in the past is gone. OK, so the first limitation is that it is historic and limits what we think about going forward. Second one is the detail. You know, if you look at the, the questions that you've got, if you look at any set of financial statements, particularly the statements of profit or loss, you see your revenue, cost of sales, admin, distribution. So cost of sales may, may have moved. That's ultimately led to a movement in gross margin and admin and distribution of move that's given you a, a movement in operating margin. But there's no specific breakdown of the costs, is there? OK, you know, what depreciation was charged in the last year within cost of sales? Uh, what what uh, other expenses have actually gone through uh, your operating costs with regards to admin and distribution? Without that detailed information, then it's much more difficult, isn't it, to make the analysis and get a good understanding of what specifically happened. That's why uh, what you saw in F1, IFRS 8, your operating segment is quite useful, isn't it? Because at least it gives you a little bit of a breakdown of what segment those costs are made up of. OK, uh, non-financial performance, largely ignored. We haven't paid any particular attention to the non-financial aspect. What about uh, customer retention rate or the ability to generate new customers or customer satisfaction? Yeah, we, we haven't taken account of that in any way, shape or form. Uh, what about uh, the, the, the rotation or, or the turnover of staff? We, we, we've not spoken about that whatsoever. They are non-financial performance measures that are very relevant to help you understand the analysis. But we don't consider it at this level here. So that's a limitation of the ratios themselves. They don't take that into consideration, do we? Uh, next one, accounting figures, manipulation. OK. Uh, you can go through there and manipulate your accounting figures, uh, you know, putting in provisions that are too large, putting in provisions that maybe are smaller than what they should be. Uh, you could adjust your accruals at the end of the year to, to push your profits up or down. So there's a lot of scope for manipulation, which obviously brings about your ethical issues, doesn't it? OK, likewise, as well as the manipulation, there's always accounting policies. There's a lot less choice with regards to accounting policies now in the world of IFRSs as we've done that process of convergence with US standards. And as part of that, we've tried to get rid of the choice. So in IS23 borrowing costs, we used to have the choice of capitalising or expensing the borrowing costs. Now we have to capitalise. Intangibles, you used to have the choice of capitalising developments or writing off the development expenditure. Now you have to capitalise them. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot less of a limitation with regards to your accounting policy, but it is still relevant. The big one I would draw your attention to is PPE, revaluation. Some entities will revalue land and building, some entities will not. Uh, it's a choice, isn't it, of accounting policy. Now, the business that revalues its land and buildings will have a much higher level of capital employed and a much higher level of depreciation and lower profits. So if you revalue your assets, you'll have lower profits, higher capital employed, 
So a much lower return on capital employed, which when you compare that then to an entity that doesn't revalue the profits, or sorry, doesn't revalue the land and buildings, doesn't have that extra increase in depreciation going through profit or loss, it could have a better return on capital employed when fundamentally it may not, okay, because we're not comparing like for like, okay. The final one that you have there, the last bit that I'm going to talk to you about before you head off into the sunset is looking at the accounting standards. Uh, if you are doing a comparison, not year on year, but compared to a competitor and that competitor is in another jurisdiction, so maybe they're in America and they operate using US accounting rules. If they do, then if the US accounting rules are substantially different to the rules that we've adopted under IFRS, that limits the comparability, doesn't it? So therefore, we might need to go through there in the real world and make some adjustments to the figures that we have to make them more comparable. Don't panic. We're not going to go back and change anything that we've done. We just calculate the ratios based upon the figures that we are given within a question. Just bear in mind that in reality, there may be adjustments that are required to bring the accounting rules in line. There we go. Six limitations. Remember the limitations and remember why they are a limitation as well. And that could potentially be a select all type of question whereby it may say which of the following are limitations of your ratio analysis. Select all that apply. OK, uh, so that's it from me. Uh, keep up the hard work. Keep practicing the questions. And as always, if you do get stuck, I will still be there. I'm not going to go anywhere else. I'll be there ready to answer any of the questions that you have on the Ask the Tutor forum. But promise me you're going to work harder than you've ever worked before between now and the real exam. If not, you might have to listen to me again. And I couldn't think of anything worse than listening to me go through and do the F2 syllabus with you again. Thanks for listening. All the best of luck with the exam. And hopefully I'll see you on F3 as opposed to going through F2 again. Good luck.